Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. It's been a week of mixed fortunes, hasn't it, for the Toffees? Three Premier League points on the board with a 2-1 win against Bournemouth, inspired of course by Umar Nias at Goodison Park at the weekend. But then the disappointment of sharing four goals with Apollon Limassol, also at Goodison on Thursday in Group E of the Europa League. Let's first of all get some reaction from the European game. We make uh, incredible mistakes by the first goal of Apollon and we got a big present to score the 1-1 by Wayne. After that, better, more aggressive. Second half, OK, good football, good goal, the 2-1, chances for the third goal. And even after the 2-2, we had uh, maybe the biggest chance in the game to, to win the game. And, and that's also football. If you are struggling, uh, maybe a little bit afraid, and then you don't get that luck. Yeah, you know, some, uh, sometimes uh, you need to have luck in uh, football. Today we didn't because we had some chance and they, uh, in second half they had one, one chance and they scored. So uh, we watch uh, for the game on Sunday and we hope uh, we will have more luck. Some players when they come to England take time to adjust, but you seem to have settled in very quickly. Do you, you're happy with how you're playing so far? Yeah, I'm happy because I have a, a chance. I play already two games for the start, and I came side two, so I'm happy with that. But uh, I have uh, I have many games in my legs because I play where I was very young, you know. So uh, I know it will be time to adjust, but uh, I think uh, I, th I will be much more better. So it is not my full adjustment. Graham, no hiding away from that. A two-two draw at home to the Cypriots is not a good result. Very disappointing, unfortunately. Um, ten minutes to go, you think we've got ourselves back into a good position in the, in the Europa League table, um, but we lose that goal from a set piece, which is even more disappointing because we should be able to deal with that situation. And uh, all of a sudden, we find ourselves bottom of the table. So it's very, very disappointing evening for us. We just didn't keep the football well enough when we needed to. No, especially first half. I think uh, I think the boss will be upset with the, the way we failed to look after the ball properly in the first half. Second half we certainly improved upon that, um, cr created a few more chances, looked a little bit livelier especially with uh, Nikola Vladic coming on and, and I thought his performance was excellent and he should be proud of that great, as well. He? he was excellent and I mean he got the reward as well by getting us that equalising goal which was all important but uh, you know unfortunately even though we got uh, we, we get ourselves ahead you know, we couldn't hang on to it, and it was vital that we had uh, had win, won that game. It was a lovely finish, not a composed finish at the Gladys Street end by one so young. Yeah, it was. I mean, he's he, he's come on and he's been positive. He's given us some energy, and uh, he takes his chances. A lovely little ball around the corner from Gilfy Sigurdsson uh, to set him on 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 route to goal, and he takes one touch and then buries it with uh, with uh, a plum past the goalkeeper, and, and we're back into the game. So. You know, at that moment, you expect us to go on and pick up all three points. Any other plus points from the game, Graham? Any decent individual performances for you? I thought Leighton Baines played very well. I thought young Mason Holgate had a had a decent game at centre half, and and obviously the performance of Vlasic. That was they're the three most imp, you know most positive moments for me. But I think uh, all round we, I think even the lads would concede that we have to improve. The other game ended in a draw. Is that good or bad? Well, does it not matter? Well, I think we've, you know, we look to ourselves, don't we? Um, you know, that would have been an ideal scenario for us that, you know, those two, Leon and Atalanta, ta only take a point each, and and we win the game because then all of a sudden the group looks totally different. Now we're up against it. We're going to have to produce some really big performances. Two games against Leon, Atalanta here, and obviously a difficult trip as we've already seen with Limassol out on out on their patch. So hopefully we're still in the uh, in a situation where we can win the group when we go out to Cyprus, but it's going to take some big performances. Well, the games are coming thick and fast as you can see, and here no doubt the lawnmowers in the background. The ground staff have only got a few days to get Goodison Park ready for the next Premier League game. Let's now hear from Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He's this week's focus of a very popular feature that we call My First. My first car was a Volkswagen Polo, a black one. First football hero. Probably either Thierry Henry or Ronaldinho. 
first game I can remember going to was, um, I think it was an FA Cup semi-final, Sheffield United against um, Arsenal at Old Trafford. Probably too young to be listen to, listening to it, but 50 Cent, get rich or die trying. First pet was a dog called Luca, American Bulldog. First roommate ever was uh, Tel Kennedy from Sheffield United. Um, I was on the bench in the FA Cup third round and he was my first roomie. Favourite Christmas present when I was a kid was probably uh, a Nintendo Wii I got. Uh, I had a paper round when I was 13. Um, I used to have to be at training for half four and I'd finish school at about half three and then my nan would drive me around my paper round. <laughs> So I gotta thank her for that. <laughs>
I think it's a good move for him and, I'm, and he's, he's set off in, in, a, in a good fashion. We heard from Mason Holgate a few moments ago. He was pressed into central defensive action last weekend due to injuries, but he, he coped with it well. He did, yeah. I mean, and two good players as well, Josh King and, and Jermaine Defoe, two really good players. So it's a good test for Ashley and Mason. He might have to do it again Sunday, but it remains to be seen. He's an old head on young shoulders, isn't he? He is. He's, he's a good lad. Certainly Mason. one for the future. And that's it for part one of this week's Everton show, but don't go too far away because there's a real treat in store in part two. We spend a lot of time in the company of one of Diamond's old teammates, Daniel Amakachi. <laughs> Welcome back to part two. Well, back in 1994, Everton signed a virtually unknown Nigerian striker called Daniel Amakachi, but by the time he'd left Goodison Park, he was an Everton legend, thanks largely to an unforgettable afternoon in 1995 when he was the hero of an FA Cup semi-final win against Tottenham Hotspur. Well, it, 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 it goes like this, that Paul Rideout's gone down on the far side of the pitch, and I've said to Daniel, get warmed up, and then Les Helm used to have a, a code, you know, we didn't like earphones or any of that yeah. nonsense. Les was a very <laughs> basic man at times and it was either that, that or like that, that yeah. you know. So, But he's given me that for Paul Rideout. Yeah. He thinks he's, so he's going to take him off the pitch and treat him. I've said to Daniel, and he said he was that desperate to get, and I'm so pleased that he did substitute himself. <laughs> but realistically, Paul Rideout, I, it wasn't that I didn't want to get Daniel on, I just wanted to see what was happening. But he was so keen, came on, scored two, and the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> Daniel, what's your memories of that game? Well, I remember I remember quite all right when Paul went down and we, we I saw it. For, for me, I thought Les, Les said, you know, uh, yeah. you know uh, five minutes. Yeah. And, you know, and then... They, Get warmed they, up, they, Daniel. Warmed, uh, He's out. You know, and then Jimmy was the, the, the coach from the reserve. You yeah, know, Jimmy and, Gabriel. Yeah, Jimmy Gabriel just gave me the paper and I handed it over. And, yeah. and I just walked in and I saw how Joe got up from his seat and I looked back at him and I've already crossed the line. But I say again, I, I didn't, it wasn't that I didn't want Daniel Long, I just wanted to see because you know? we were playing well at the time. You know, we were, we'd come back into the game, they had a, a dubious penalty, mm. the only goal we conceded yeah. in the whole cup run. And then, uh, you know, Daniel's going on, I just didn't want to play quite that quickly, but I'm so glad he did. The players they had, you know, they, they, the players they had, you know, I think everybody thought we were going to lose that game because sports were on fire, they were really on fire. Sheringham, Klinsman, Barmby, you know, they, it's they incredible. Were but, side. you know, the good thing about us from, you know, from the training throughout yeah. that week to the locker room at Allen Road, yeah. with that belief that we're going to win that game was right there. Mm -hmm. And you can see it from the first second when the referee blew yeah. and you can see the way everybody was walking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even the players on the bench, you know, that's the most beautiful thing about, you know, uh, the coach here. You know, uh, the atmosphere that he brings into the into the team makes a lot of difference. And it contributed in that, in our success in winning the FA Cup, you know, for sure. And people don't know, I, I nearly signed him at Manchester City when I was manager. I was desperate to sign him at Manchester City. Uh, shall we be political and say he had a very unfavourable report on the an, uh, operation that he'd had done and we couldn't sign him. I was desperate to sign Daniel. Mm. I tell you what, I was desperate to sign Daniel the player and Daniel the person because he's, he was one of those rare people who could light the dressing room up. He had a great dance. He used to <laughs> dance. He did, honestly. Ne Neville Southall had this now 56 or whatever it was. <laughs> and I remember Wigfield was number one. Well, yeah. But the House of Pain used to come on. We'd jump around and that was just key for Daniel to stand up and give us all there. But he, he had the place buzzing. He was a, a great, what would you call it, a, a great igniter of the dressing room. The best substitution I never made. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you were here at the club when Daniel first signed. What's your first memories of him? First memories is his first goal he scored, and he kept telling us he had this strange dance <laughs> that, he, that he did when he se when, to celebrate a goal. And I remember he scored at the park end, end if I'm, if I'm right. Yeah, that's right. And I jumped on his back <laughs> and he couldn't do the dance. And he was like, get off, get off. And he couldn't do his dance. But, but we saw the dance a few more times after that. So that's my first memories of Daniel. And John, yours? Just in, a, in and around the dressing room, Daniel was, was brilliant, brilliant fit for us at the time. He was full of life, great fun, big beam and smile, fitted in straight away. Uh, great for banter, you know, we, we, you know, we'd pull his leg, he'd pull ours, he was just brilliant around the lads, fantastic. And it was a great time at the club because 
that period when we were struggling and then everyone remembers that memorable season whereby we were towards the bottom of the league, Joe came in, we won the derby and then it just took off from there. It did and we went on a, a great cup run and our, and our league form improved as well at the same time. Um, one thing that stood out with that team, not just the fact that we escaped relegation and won the FA Cup, but the team spirit, I have to say, and, and, and I say it to all the young players now, it's the best team spirit I've ever experienced. Every, every player's home is open to the next. You know, he invites me to his house like one million times and you know, I know his wife, I know his kids. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible memory. If you have that spirit in a team, definitely you should be very successful. You know, uh, he, when, Ro, when Joe came in, he, you know, he told him what he wanted and uh, we saw more of him you know, as a player, you know, what he can do more, the confidence that he had. You know, in swinging those uh, those crosses, those those corner kicks, those set pieces, and uh, you know he took the team to the next level. And of course, should I mention your name, Boldy? <laughs> <laughs> wow, he was guilty. He was he was he was incredible in yeah. the middle. This yeah. one, and he nice. could, his, his energy in the middle was uh, was second to none. We're back in Europe this season, John. And just, uh, you, you guys played with each other in, in Europe. Do you, do you know what was special with anyone for when we beat Reykjavik three-two in Iceland about that day? Special for Apart me. from me scoring a sexy you, goal, of you, course. You all scored? Yeah. All three of you <laughs> scored? Yeah. Yeah. You're boring. You. How boring are you telling us that fact, by the way? You could ask us any question in the world and you tell you ask us that. Well, he's, he's looking at me because it's the biggest <laughs> shack <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I that is. I mean, just special memories in terms of favourite games from that era. What, what, was there any standout for you? Oh, well, it'd have to be the, the semi final. I mean, that was a one great performance, and obviously, Daniel was a massive part of that. And, you know, I'm not sure he was meant to be going on or whatever, but I, I, don't, I don't care. And, and, and it, was a, it was a magnificent performance that day. And there's so many, you still see pictures of it now, and it, it, it's a great pictures, an amazing day, and a, and a great performance. And probably a pinnacle, of, well, obviously, the cup final, but. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah, no, in the I, semi final. In England, I think playing for Everton, I think that that, that was the game. My first yeah. game, I know, at home at Goodison scoring the one he did mention, <laughs> and the semi-final, of course. I think, uh, I think that's the day. Like I did told you earlier, you know, growing up as an African in Africa is the FA Cup we know, mm. you know, and to be part of, you know, history to help a team win, you know, the trophy, it goes a long way. Yeah. And just finally, for how proud this club's history is, what does it mean for the three of you that fans are always going to look back and think, remember you and, and what is a special moment in the club's history? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's why you play football. You know, we all play football to, to win and, and to win trophies and, and to have memories. And uh, again, to quote Joe Royal, rocking chair memories, you know, mm. when you're old and you sit back and you think back on your career, you'll remember games like, mm. we, we call it the ammo semi-final, don't we? Um, just, just so much pride filled with, with being a part of this wonderful football club. Yeah, like I did said earlier, you know, once a blue, always a blue. You know, it's it's strange when I tell people I played for only two seasons here. Somebody asked me this morning, how how many seasons did you play? I said two. He said just two. Mm -hmm. You know, because the love that uh, they have for me and I have for them, it's uh, it's second to none, and that's the most beautiful thing about it. And that's why we're still here. I'm not wearing the badge, but I'm a blue forever. And nobody can take that away from me. It was it was me that asked you about the two seasons. The two seasons, yeah. And it was because how much how much bad gear did you wear in that <laughs> two seasons? <laughs> hey, flamboyant. Hey, and it's still going on today. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> no, they, they, you know, I, I I brought fashion into the team. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Duncan brought the madness. I brought fashion. <laughs> He did look the part off the pitch ammo, didn't he? He did. Very flamboyant in his dress <laughs> sense, wasn't he? I mean, it was funny, actually, because, well, I mean, you've got two ends of the spectrum, really. You've got John Eberle at one end and <laughs> ammo at the other end. Ammo was all glitz and glamour and colours and Ebo was dull and grey, which is a bit rich coming from me today, but Ebo knows what I mean. Back in the day, you were somewhere in the middle, weren't you, to be fair? Yeah, always sit in the middle. It's just a nice comfort zone. <laughs> Let's switch our attentions to the under-23s. A terrific victory against Arsenal at Southport, 4-2. Yeah, continuing their good vein of form and I'm sure David Unsworth and the boys will be really, really happy about uh, the, the performance because Arsenal are a good side and um, they went 1-0 down as well. So to show the you know, desire to get themselves back into the game and force themselves ahead and they had another setback when 
you know, Arsenal equalised, but we forged on and, and pushed forward and got the three points. The Arsenal goalkeeper didn't exactly shower himself in glory on the night, did he? He didn't, did he? I mean, you know, two, he's gone in down in instalments on two <laughs> of the goals and gets done at the near post on his, on his, on our fourth one and I'm sure he'll be disappointed, but, you know, you take those chances when they come your way if you're a home player. You can see by the celebrations, David Unsworth joining in as well, just how much it means to these boys to win these games. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the most important things that we, we set our stall out with the under-23s, that we, we want, want them to get into the first-team squad, into the first-team 11, but go there winning games of football, learn to win, you know, get into the habit of winning games of football, because you can't beat the habit of winning. David Unsworth's big on game management, isn't he? And as you said earlier, the boys did fall behind, they showed immense character. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, if you're going to pull on the blue shirt week in, week out, you've got to show character, that's first and foremost. You've got to have a desire, and uh, the lads have certainly got that. I've seen them on numerous occasions, Darren, as we all have. And, you know, to a man, they, they show that and David demands it of them. The downside of the night, of course, was a, a bad injury to Gethin Jones. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Uh, you know, we talk about a fantastic performance and the three points and what have you. It overshadowed, obviously, by the injury to Gethin. We hope it's not going to be too bad. Um, obviously, we've got to sit tight and wait and see the full extent of the injury. But we hope it's going to be short-term rather than long-term for Gethin because he's a, he's a very good player and a really nice lad as well and you don't like to see the good guys injured. We wish him well. And the other 23 boys are up to second place now in Premier League 2. And that's just about it for this week's Everton show. My thanks to Graham Stewart for joining us this week. There's no Everton show next week, by the way. We're all taking an international break. So do join us again in a fortnight.